Hello my fellow viewers, my name is Ren the Multiviewer, and welcome to this artifact finding video for the first region in Shadows of Mordor. So, in this... So, with this video, there's actually going to be two parts. So, there's the artifacts in this region, and then there's the artifacts in the last region. So, for now, we're just going to do the artifacts here and I'll quickly show you where they would be located on the map and once we get to that location we will I'll show you where to exactly find them when we get to that area so because one of the problems is in the um you see on the mini map they don't exactly tell you like say how high they are oh, for fuck's sake will be the highlight of my day uh, hang on. Let's just kill him first. I'm too fast for you. Let's draw in. So So, as I was saying, the problem is with these icons on the map is that they do not tell you if they are higher or lower than where you are currently standing. So I will show you where exactly they are on once you get into that area. Also they don't exactly appear unless you enter the Wraith world, so here we are. So here's the first artifact. These artifacts hold memories of Mordor. Use the left and right stick to look for the memory, then press square to reveal it. I'll also read out the stuff on the side because I will. While we find the memory point. A remarkable find this artifact may date back to the second age, to the great Numeranian incursion where the Dark Lord's Auron willingly fell into captivity, it would likely have been used by Hela to grind roots and herbs in the creation of black trees and ungurgent required to keep an army hale and relatively healthy. Sorry for the poor reading. The first messengers have rolled into camp. They're reporting few casualties. We've struck a mighty blow against the forces of Mordor aligned against us. Let it be so, and not fools idle chatter. Hagedorn, what news? <laughs> they say we've won a monumental victory. You'll not be needing all that Athelis you've been grinding, my friend. Few need healing on this day, and more's the wonder. They say the Golden King has brought back a prize. Sauron himself, they're in the heavy chains. I have lived half my life on the boundary of Mordor, thinking it was dead, never knowing the stories it held. The Land of Shadow is awakening from a long slumber. It has many stories yet to tell us. Okay, so the central idea here is, in this video, I'll show you where on the map we'll be going. Then with a quick edit, we'll be in that location. I will show you where to find it in that location. So it might be up like on ramparts or might be under stuff. And then after that, I'll read through the bits of info there, find the memory, play it, and then let Talion and Callum talk. And that's basically the entirety of the video. All right, this is heavily edited. So the only things I'll keep in, I'll throw to the end. And yeah, so enjoy the video. I'll leave timestamps for everything else. So. Let's get a move on. Iron Shackles. These are prisoner shackles, leg irons to be specific. They date back to the Second Age and were most likely worn by Gondorian captives, men and women, who 
environmentally servitude built the towers towers of the teeth flanking the um, Moranon. These captives would later throw off their shackles and begin a new life as outcasts in Uden. Some would keep their shackles to remind themselves of the hardships. soldiers they are not ready to die all things that live must die man alone faces the mystery of what is beyond death Lockpick. This simple metal prod is a beggar's burglar's sorry, burglar's best friend. The pick is small and easily concealed. It can be palmed or hidden underneath the tongue with minimal effort. In the hands of a skilled thief, the pick can be used to pick and quiet to quickly and quietly defeat the most locks of non-magical origin. The situation is very confused. How is it confused? I see the prisoners escaping, running towards the gates, which seem to have blown open by sorcery or sabotage. Archer, stand down! Sir? We're not wasting good arrows on those people. They've served their purpose. They're damned. They're damned well out of my hair. Mordor can take the whole stinking lot of them. And send my compliments to the captain of the gates. I suppose he sent me this lockpick as some sort of joke. The last place we want to be is the one place we are doomed to stay. And the outcasts fled into it to escape Gondor. And it is here that the Dark Lord will gather his armies like pieces on a game board. Unless we stop him. Blade. Ah, oh, God. Sorry for sorry if I butcher this name. The Nithogarians carried a great many things with them in their great disposal. Their journey was long and perilous, and not all who undertook it lived to see their new homes. They carried with them what they could beyond their physical possessions, the tools and trinkets. They also carried with them. They sh their shared dreams for a better life. Their land was consumed, but they would live on, and their relics spread throughout Middle Earth. Let's write that. He's in jail for a reason. For saying what we're all thinking. You want to live forever? Plow in this field? The elves lord it over us. Don't they just? Sauron's right. We can live without pain. Without growing old. And you want to go to war to make that happen? I want the king to listen to good ideas. Well, then, he should have nothing to do with Sauron. Fighting with the elves is not a bad idea. It's the worst idea imaginable. No blood of Numenor is in my veins. I am a Northman, an exile. Phallus never let me forget that, and Yorith never cared. To the Eldar, all men are the followers. Fleeting visitors who soon pass beyond the circles of the world. Yesterday, I killed the 
biggest crowd you ever saw. Uh-oh, here he goes. How many heads did this one have? Did it breathe fire like the last one? Branding iron. Not old Scorchy is a common refrain among the orcs of Udin. It is interesting to know that while branding with a hot, red hot iron as punishment is commonplace with the orcs searing the flesh of their unruly brethren as much as they do with their own slaves, old Scorchy is unique, used only on the most Caladent? Anyway. The orcs believe Scorchy holds sorcerous power, enable, enabling it to burn longer and hotter and to scorch with such intensity the pain can be felt for weeks after the branding. Alright, you. You're not so brave now, are you? Hold him, boy. Filthy ends off me! It's simple, see. Do unto others quicker in order than they do unto you. But at least you tried. Next time, try harder. This is going to hurt a lot. But you'll learn who's in charge. No! No, no, old Scorchy! Anything but old Scorchy! These Uruk have a twisted concept of justice. It is not justice. It is the constant weeding out of the weak in favor of the strong. Had a note. A parchment letter sent from the outcast Eden details her immediate capture by the Uruks. The note is clearly intended for Hyogun, her husband and the leader of the outcast. Whether it has reached its intended recipient is another matter entirely. My dear Hyogun, I hide outside the camp and pray they do not find me. They are taking anyone they find into slavery. If only you were here. But I know you must fight the Uruks, or there will be no chance any of us will ever be free. I fear I will never see you again, if they find me. I do not know how long I can survive. Your beloved wife, Erin. Carrick Angrin. The Iron Jaws clamped hard on the people trapped here. The Dark Lord in all his forms desires sheer domination. Rangers reading Primer. The Rangers of Gondor are not just powerful warriors, they also perform a host of duties throughout the kingdom. Depending on the circumstances, a ranger may be called upon to serve as a mediator, a judge, a medic, and on occasion, even a teacher. Rangers have been known to carry basic reading primers, and during their stays in villages where opportunities for learning are scant, to so select a few favorite pupils and show them how to read and write.
given the outcast a chance to escape Mordor, to reach the safety of Gondor. And we can draw the eye of our enemy. As long as we can hold his gaze, we can buy time for Middle-earth. Rangers Cloak Clasp. These decorative metal bands were used by rangers primarily to keep their cloaks closed. As guardsmen of Gondor, rangers were held to exacting standards by their masters, and this meant keeping their class polished. Rangers would use their class as makeshift signal devices, catching the sunlight to create fl fl reflective flashes to communicate with their comrades over long distances. about to take the oath to become a ranger he did not deserve such an evil end Extractor cog. This cog was split from one of the Great Uruk Wars. War machine. Oh. Let me rephrase. Extractor cog. This cog was split from one of the Great Uruk War Machines, perhaps an extractor. As the Uruks push further and further into Mordor, they have torn up the land, seeking resources to fuel their Dark Lord's massive war effort. Extractors churn. The ground to uncover metals for the forges, clay for the kin, kin, kins, and any artifacts, weapons, or tools might be used, might be of use. Here, found it in Udun. What is it? I got these machines, see? And they're digging up everything in Udun. The big tears the land up, then the slaves pick through everything. Clay and mud go to the kilns. If they find metal, that goes to the forges. Anything they can use, they take back. And if they find an old weapon or piece of armor, they hand it off to the Urukai, the bigots. Maybe to study, maybe to wear. I don't know. They're on the move for sure. We must know what is happening in Mordor. We have other eyes there, but yours are sharp. You serve us well. You will return there and report back. The council must not learn of your actions. Do not get caught. For years we stood on top of the Black Gate, looking into Mordor, seeing nothing. We were asleep. The murderous rhythm of the Dark Lord's war machines will awaken all. We must break them. Musty Dome. This almanac has been bound in leather and appears to be more than a century old. The writing is in a Compilation of history, poetry, and translation from across Middle Earth. It gathers together works of integrity from great rounds of Gondor, Armor, and Numenor, and even some samples of songs from the distant halflings. The most curious entry is The Lament, a work of muse verses whose 
controversial origins has been debated among scholars for many years. It has been suggested by some that its author was an Ent, one of the ancient shepherds of the trees. Are you a Thelus or Hithlus? I can't find anything in this almanac. Well, only one way to be sure. Cheers. Wait. This will either cure my fever, or I'll be dead in seconds. It shan't do either. You'll need to ground it up for its healing properties. You? The outcast woman. I'm Erin. I never got to thank you, Ranger. There are but few of your kind on the Black Gate. Duty clouds kindness in these parts. That's why I deserted. I'm here going. I promised you all if we would one day travel the Anduin. When Deerhile was grown, we would go together, and we would behold the pillars of the kings. I hope that Hirgon's people can escape. I do not know where you shall see your family again. The doom of man is beyond the vision of the elves. Uh, uh oh. Someone's got to go get it back. Well, I'm not doing it. I've got better things to do. Well, that was close. Helm. This helm was once used by an outcast by the outcast of Unun, Udun, for secret rituals. The horns and the lever were taken from the wild kine of An Anor, hunted far from Mordor in the fields of Ruan. It dates from the distant time when these men were prisoners of Gondor, made to toil on the construction of the towers of the Teeth. Even now, the outcasts remain mistrustful of those wearing metal armor. This helmet is a reminder of the dark times past, a harbinger of darker times to come, and a symbol of the outcast's determination to never again live under the yoke of slavery. You've led me into your homes. You've led me into your lives. And now you bestow upon me your greatest honor. Though I come from the Black Gate, though I was once known to you as the enemy, I turn my back on Gondor. You people, you outcasts as you've been named, are people of honor, people of strength. I have found love within your tribe, and for your tribe as well. And you have taught me of a life I thirsted for, but never knew existed. Now it is my time to teach you. I will impart to you all my knowledge of war. And the orcs push us, but we will find strength and push back. And this land will be ours. If we could have trusted each other, maybe Hirgon would not have needed to desert us. Maybe together we would have been ready when Sauron returned. Even without the fell influence of the Dark Lord, mankind shall never know the end of war.
Pickaxe. Orcs refer to mining as working the black stream, as they extract ore and adamant from the earth to fuel their war machines. They are adept miners and oftentimes use steel pickaxes such as this one to extract ore. Now however, pickaxes are in the hands of slaves and orcs serve as overseers. Grogbol. The myth of the filthy, crud encrusted Uruk Grogbol is just that. Uruk trainers beat it into their charges to keep their grog bowls as clean as possible to avoid the old soldier disease. These bowls are commonly made of clay and baked in huge kilns, but Mordor has pr provided a fruitful realm for the Uruks, and now some bowls are made of metal or wood. is a harsh but effective medicine. These Uruk truly are twisted reflections of my kin. Rusted Horn. This horn held the great victory at the end of the Second Age by the Last Alliance at the Battle of Daurogalad. It blew in defiance at the mouth of Sauron and assembled an army of more than 300,000 or orcs and the Dark Lord himself who ruled over the forces aligned against the men and elves. It sounded the charge on the battle plain and Serenaded the fallen dead, those unfortunate souls who would be forever doomed to haunt the dead marshes. They say the enemy is weak on the left, and that the dwarves will tear through them there. Maybe then we can leave these filthy marshes and go home. Yesterday, the enemy made a call for parley. We saw the emissary's party ride out, a terrible black figure atop a black horse and flanked by two huge men, similarly clad in black. They were not allowed to ride among our lines. Amid suspicion, they would scout our disposition and report back to their vile master. Instead, a small group of elves and men rode out to meet him. We could not hear what was said, but there will be no peace. Around the camp there are whispers. They say the emissary's mouth blackened and burned with Sauron's words. And that saying them caused the emissary great pain. He promised only slavery and toil. 
and I am compelled to believe it. I cannot help but think we will never make it into Mordor. Only death awaits us here. Dear Hyle said that he saw ghosts on the dead marshes. I thought he just saw his own fear. The sleepless dead, the shadow men, the dead ones. Mordor calls to them all. Raven Idol representing Morgoth. Before Nimador's Four, its priest and dark acolytes held sacrifices to strange gods and temples, and graven idols such as these were freely worshipped. This idol represented Morgoth, the first dark lord of Middle-earth and was largely carried to the mainland by missionaries seeking to spread its, his vile message. First Dark Lord of Middle-earth. The great enemy. Sauron was his servant, and was loyal to the end and beyond. Serpentine Blade. A deadly shiv, this Serpentine Blade has played a role in many betrayals. Uruk power struggles are legendary, weakness is not tolerated and warriors move up in rank by murdering their superiors. The Uruks have been roused by their recent successes in Mordor and as soldiers ambitions grows, weapons such as these are becoming more and more common. stand against these Uruk. They are filled with such pure hate. We will teach them the meaning of fear, and in that we will give hope to Middle-earth. Thank you. 
coded journal entry coded coded journal <laughs> coded journal entry one the skies over Mordor are being cleared by fell beasts the hell hawks Crows, such as this poor fellow, are hunted relentlessly, but not as food. No, crows are being hunted because each each of the oversized blackbirds is a potential spy, a messenger who might be carrying news to the master outside of Mordor. This crow met its doom trying to deliver a coded message. Stupid. We underestimated our enemies. They are forged for one purpose to destroy the world of men. Strange Rock. Ordered. Ruin eruptions are sudden and violent. When the mountain awakes in fire, none are safe. The sky is darkened with smoke and ash, and fiery rocks are shot high into the air before landing with deadly force. This glassy obsidian stone is one of those volcanic rocks. It dates back to the Second Age, perhaps to when the Dark Lord formed his initial bond with the volcano. These remnants of Uderun's fury are prized for their hardness. They are often shaped to make weapons. Where'd you get off to, child? I found this, Daddy. This kind of rock is very rare. It comes from the volcano. There. Now, doom is a foul place. Angry and mean. It will explode when Sauron is near and plotting. Spitting all manner of foulness into the air. Smoke and dust and rocks that burn the ground. It does this as a warning. I will not stay silent for long. Sort of like your mother. Don't tell your mother, is it? So this rock is... It is a rock. Nothing more. And you needn't be afraid of a rock or doom, which is silent to this very day. And sweetie, if you need a lesson from all this, why, well, here's a fine one. Even a foul place like that volcano can produce beautiful things. There has been no sign of fire on Mount Doom for generations. I watched Gilgala die on the slopes of Oladruin, burned to death by the heat of Sauron. This is where the storm will gather that will engulf the world of men. Basket fragment. This is utterly unremarkable. Basket has seen better days. Few, if any, of the outcast possessions have survived. In bygone days, this basket would likely have been carried by a woman on her daily errands and used to carry all manners of goods. Stop! Do not move! By order of Gondor, trespassing on the Moran is punishable by death. 
Do not... A woman? The outcasts now send women alone to steal from us. Do your worst, Ranger. But I will fight. You were but skin and bones. I can still fight. Gather what you can and run. Quickly, before the others see you. Shouldn't be led to starve. Quickly now. Go. Go! These outcasts were strong to last in Mordor. To survive this wasteland while we occupied the gate. Yet they are not strong enough to survive the return of the Black Hand. Their only hope lies beyond the Mountains of Shadow. All right, and that's all the artifacts in the Undun region of the game. I will release the second half, the second part of the artifacts when we get closer to the end of the game. Once we've finished the majority of the majority of the missions in the um, next region's area before we go off and face the Black Hand. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, have a good one, my viewers.